Welcome to this brief discussion of CSS to help guide your work on exercise 5. If uh, you look on pages 235 and 236 of your textbook, you'll see that the author has offered two different ways to incorporate CSS into the HTML documents that you've already created. On page 236, there's a reference to internal CSS. I've demonstrated this in my own documents that I've created for my Don's Depot site. So you see I have my index.html open, I also have my uh, forms.html open, and my media.html open. Uh, and I've included style rules in the head section of my index.html. So I've added this uh, new element called style type equals uh, text front slash CSS. Um, as an element it opens and closes within the head section. And I've introduced a number of style rules. So a style rule consists of a selector. So in this case, in the first one, it's the uh, body selector. And then a declaration. And I have a number of properties, in this case color, and values, in this case a hexadecimal uh, code for a specific color. Uh, followed by a number of other properties and values that make up this declaration. And the declaration is enclosed in curly brackets. So, so I have a curly bracket that starts the declaration. I have a property, in this case color, followed by a colon, and then um, in my case a hexadecimal number for a specific color, followed by a semicolon, which closes that uh, property and value. And then another property for background color, another colon, another hexadecimal number, another semicolon, which closes that property value combination, another property, font family, colon, followed by font family set. Uh, I wanted my fonts to look a little bit old-fashioned for my Don's Depot site, so I chose this Bookman Old Style font family, followed by a um, semicolon and then a curly bracket to close this declaration. And then I have a number of others in my uh, set of style rules. I have style rules for my headings that indicate font sizes that are relative to the base font uh, using the EM designation. So I want my uh, my he first level heading to be two and a half times normal font size. I want my second level heading to be w one and three quarters the size of the normal font, and then I want my heading three to be one and a quarter size um, times the size of the normal font. And then I have a line height uh, property and value for my paragraphs. I don't want the lines to be really close together, so I've added a little bit of space between the lines using the line height uh, property. And I've created an ID for contact, because I want my contact information to be a little different color. And I've created a couple of property value uh, color designations for my links uh, when they're just static on the page, and then uh, for when, they, uh, when someone hovers over them with a cursor. Um, I should have included a visited link. I'll probably add that later. And then I have a class set up for open and I've created this line height that's a little um, greater than my paragraph line height that I want to use in my lists uh, in some of my lists because I want them to you know just be sort of be opened up a little bit, which is why I called this particular class open. So all these style rules are embedded in the head section for index, which means they should render whenever I um, look at my index page in the browser. Now the problem with using internal style is that if I want to use the same style rules in my media document then I have to reproduce all of those style rules in the head section of my uh, media document. Same for forms. So if I wanted uh, these style rules to apply to the forms document then I have to put them in the forms document. Uh, which means I have to replicate my style rules uh, three different times or as many times as I want to have pages that include them embedded in the head section. So an easier way to do it uh, and a more commonplace way to do it and the way that I want you to do it is to create a style sheet. So I'm going to go back to my index page. In the style sheet we're going to remove this style section from the head. Whoops, let me take out the last little bit of it. And instead, now I've got a little markup element I've hidden down here at the bottom of my page. I'm going to take out and I'm going to put it up here in the head section. So I've got a new link element 
that I'm going to paste in here. And the link has a reference to a file called styles.css that's located in a directory called CSS. And it's a text file and it's my primary style sheet. Okay, so I'm going to go to that. So now here's my style sheet open. I'll maximize it so we can see it. It's a simple text document. It's called styles.css and you notice there's not really any sections like in your HTML document. There's no need for an HTML element or a head element or a body element or any like anything like that. All it needs to contain are the style rules themselves and for exercise 5 I've asked you to put some uh, comments in. So this these style rules are exactly the same as the ones you saw in the style section. I've just spaced out the elements a little bit differently so that um, it looks nice on the page and I can uh, see it a little better. Okay, So with uh, this one style sheet and reference to it in all three of my documents, so let me open up my documents again. So I'll go to my media uh, file and I'll paste in that reference and I'll go to my forms page it looks kind of messy right now. And I'll paste in that link reference. And my index page already has it. I save all of those. I save my style sheet. Um, I have my style sheet in a directory called CSS. In my remote directory, I've created a directory called CSS. And I upload my. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. And so I upload my style sheet to my remote host and I go take a look out on the web and now you see that my Don's Depot site looks a little different. It's now applied the style sheet. So my link colors are different. This particular list is spaced out a little differently. Uh, the font looks a little different. The background color, etc. Let me show you the source code behind this. And you'll see that um, in my unordered list of my links I've applied the class open which has separated my um, list of links uh, a little bit in terms of their line height so they're spaced a little bit uh, more than they would be without this class designation. So um, that's the beauty of using an external style sheet.